Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friends, Sam Clement and Courtney Trush. Y'all say hello. How's it going? Hey, John. Hey, guys. You know, here we are about a week later uh, after the administration or the president, more specifically, announcing going to cancel up to $10,000 of student debt if you took out a Pell Grant in college, 20000 all based on income parameters, all that stuff. Um, some analysts are saying it's going to cost upwards $300 billion for the, to the Treasury. Other people were saying it could end up $540 billion. And then some others are even and still others are saying, we don't really know just how much this is going to cost the federal government, but it's in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Here I am. I didn't <laughs> All the student loans I, I had at one point, long since paid off, long since paid off. But you guys are a little bit closer to it, particularly you, Sam, only being four or five years out of college. What do you? What do you? What does your generation think about this? Well, it sounds like free money. I mean, I think that's what most people and when they hear this, hey, I like free they're money. They're saying if you're taking away ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, that means I have an extra ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, which I think we all know is not the case. But yeah. I think that's kind of the sentiment around it, and I think that's also the getting, I guess, a little extra political brownie points, I think. So do you think people actually use it in thinking, okay, this will help me pay down my debt, or do you think they'll look at it as, oh, it's extra money so I can get additional loans because I'm, I'm going to, it's basically free? I think probably most, like, both. Probably, probably people think both, but I would imagine a lot of young people, when they first hear this, are probably thinking they're getting a $10,000 check. I think some people will actually probably think that. So, hey, no doubt. Hey, this is fantastic. The government's going to give me $10,000. No, no, no. Slow down. That's not the case at all. It's just if you have $100,000 worth of student loans, you now have 90000 And we're, we're assuming that all these loans are through the federal government. Well, virtually all of them are yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, if you refinance or any sort of package like that, you're not yeah, part I mean, of it. If you consolidated 10, and I, I hear what you're saying. But, but, Courtney, I mean, even so, ten grand. well, that sounds like a ton of money. College is just expensive in general, particularly, I mean, if you're out of state or going to a private school. I mean, I, you've looked up some of the numbers. I mean, yeah. tell me tell me how much it costs to go to school these days. So just a quick Google search. They said in-state is roughly a little over 10000 Out-of-state oh, is twenty. dollars We're paying yeah. more than 10000 Come well, yeah, on. Yeah, a year. Yeah, right. Except and then, that has to be just tuition. Tuition. Just tuition. All of the room and board we're not including. And then private is thirty six, roughly thirty six thousand. So assuming that your child can get through college in four years, which sometimes is a struggle. Um, I did it. it well yeah, I did, I did too, but not everyone I didn't have does any it. Some people do a bonus year. Um, so in state will cost you forty one a little over forty one thousand. Out of state would cost you a hundred and seven thousand and private would cost you roughly 147 but you know the whole reason they're doing this is because they've called it a, a student debt crisis for at least the last couple of years it's become a bigger issue saying there's a student debt crisis but if i have 147 thousand dollars in debt ten thousand dollars while i appreciate it that's just interest well yeah when you we, you know we talked about it earlier if you kind of amortize it out on probably 10 years well, yeah, yeah 10 most years of them are 10 years yeah i mean that's what a hundred something dollars a month well it's that, interesting that you should say that because i actually I, if, let's see 10 year am ten thousand five and a half percentage yeah he's doing the ball on his head i'm doing uh, <laughs> counting on my fingers counting on my fingers got an abacus out here sam i come up a roughly one hundred and eight dollars and fifty three cents per month. Fantastic. Man. With interest being forty five dollars and eighty three cents, and principal sixty two ninety nine, at least the first month of repayments. That's just just spitballing it, Courtney. Yes. But how does this solve the student debt crisis? If there is a crisis around the amount of student debt, how does taking off a little bit off the top of it solve the crisis, and in fact not make it worse? Because in my head, like you asked, if if I know that they're going to waive some money. That's already maybe some more I can take out. And two, yes. what's to keep me from thinking they're not going to do this more and more and more right. down the road? It's the same thing that you know we talked about with stimulus packages. Once you get it once, you're going to be assuming more and more. Yes. And you know we've talked before about how there's no sort of restrictions on student loans. Like it's so easy to go out and get mm -hmm. student loans without a good plan to repay them, uh, partially due to it being through the federal government. And so how does this not just really kind of make the problem worse with the problem in my mind being that people can go out and get all this debt, therefore colleges can raise the prices without questions asked. I mean, it, it seems like the root issue just gets worse from this. Well, the thing is, it's kind of like the federal government saying, I'm going to loan you 10, 10 bucks, but you only have to pay me back nine. Yeah. 
I mean, so, okay, I still owe you money. I just don't owe you quite as much. And I think the thing that's a real question mark for me, I mean, okay, I can figure out the 10 grand, 20 grand Pell grant, if you work for the federal government, different, different uh, ball wax there, you get to maybe pay it all off. However, part three of what I read on federalstudentaid.gov, again, it's a website, clearly, uh, some of these rules, I mean, they're just, just like they're, they're going to make it to where college is going to be virtually free for a lot of folks. And this is just going to just get the Treasury just even more and more in debt because colleges won't have any reason to keep costs down if the government is making loans and then forgiving them on the backside. So why would universities... I mean, it, it, they're going to keep costs down. Well, let's go, like let's the get the spigot going. It destroys the whole supply-demand equation. Well, but would you not think, though, that the, similar to the medical industry, right, that you would have some type of negotiation of how much it should cost? Like the government would then drive down the average cost because they would say, we're only going to be willing to pay you this, just like Blue Cross Blue Shield does with a hospital. Well, I mean, well, you're right about that, but let, let me read what this they sell. Federal Student Aid, an office of the U.S. Department of Education, Part 3, it said this, the new rule would require borrowers to pay no more than 5% of their discretionary income monthly on undergraduate loans. So only 5% of, I mean, that's all you're paying, your debt service. Raise the amount of income that is considered non-discretionary income and therefore is protected from, uh, from uh, repayment. Forgive loan balances after 10 years of payments uh, with loan balances of 12000 or less. Cover the borrower's unpaid monthly interest. I mean, okay, the, the hitch deal. just keep on coming, and so, so you're that's encouraged that's encouraged not to that, pay your debt. Well, in a lot of ways, and so what concerns me about that is it's just kind of this is a snowballing feature that if we ever get some fiscal prudence back in back in Washington, anyone that tries to get rid of this. You might say, hey, you're taking my benefits away. You're taking my entitlements away. And then we kind of really come up to the question, Sam and Courtney, does the White House have the authority, legal authority, to actually do this, understanding that in the Constitution, it is the Congress that controls the purse strings of the federal government? And I think there's going to be some pushback. It seems like the, the, the avenue they're trying to justify it through is under an act that allows them under... Uh, they're essentially off of COVID. They're saying because of COVID, because we're in a national emergency still, that be a the national emergency that, forever at this rate. That the director of uh, the secretary of education has the authority is what they're trying to say. But this is a solution. So we're we're harping on breaking down the solution that the administration is trying to make, due to the fact that it's so expensive to send your child to college. And right now, you have to go to college, right? I mean, to get a reputable job, for the most part, you could go to trade school or something like that, but to get a normal job, you would, I say a normal job, I don't mean that, but you know, like. T- a career path. A job. career path, thank you. Um, and so, of course, I have my bushel of children that I'm supposed to help get through college. You should live in a shoe. <laughs> yes, I might be living in a shoe based off of trying to afford college. So basically, I looked at in 10 years what it cost to send a college, our kid to college. And now, given this isn't apples to apples fully because it's looking at a private college, including room and board, is roughly $262,000 is what it's projected to be. So I've got to save. You and Alex really should right a million that. dollars, roughly, <laughs> give or take. Good for you. Yeah. How in the world am I going to do that? And also feed them and clothe them and everything else, you know. So that's overwhelming to me that I'm thinking, okay, obviously we need help. Obviously, it's something that it doesn't make sense that it that the cost of sending a child to college would be much greater than what they would make probably their first ten years even in the workforce. Well, have you thought of giving up one of your children? I know. Well, I mean, I might. Maybe if I sell them, I could afford to send the others to college. I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. But, you know, uh, which one Which one would Both be Both selling my that? child yeah. and the cost of college. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That's against the law. Right. I would never do such a thing. But, you know, going back to the justification they're using, there it's the HEROES Act of 2003. It allows... Heroes. It allows the Secretary of Education to waive or modify loans based on a national emergency. And it's hard for me to imagine a, a court leaning towards agreeing with that versus going against that opinion. So, so, so we're just going to wave the magic wand every time that there's a perceived emergency? Yeah. It's, it's and just pan- start waiving debt? So it seems to me like I think there's going to be some more fight over this. 
Well, you know, you look at like how much certain institutions make from just sports, right? So let's think. Let's use our great University of Alabama. The one at Birmingham or Tuscaloosa? Tuscaloosa. Okay. They're both great. Wait a second, I want. They're both great. <laughs> Don't tick off half of our listener base. Yeah. <laughs> Even Auburn, we can pull in Auburn. But you think about how much money they bring in through, you know, athletics. And I, I don't fully know where I'm going with this, but to the point of saying... Yeah, well, join the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you use that money, instead of paying the co- the, the coach, right? Nick Saban, I think they reported, makes now... He's 10, the highest, 12, yeah. Something yeah, he made 11 million, 11-something million, 11 million now Scourge a year. McDuck type money. Yeah, so... He makes thought, almost as much as... But why Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he make that? <laughs> you think about what, what the... Co- and they build these ridiculous stadiums and all of this, like keeping up with the Jones, but what if we... You know, maybe in this utopian society, like, drive that back to actually, like, okay. the university okay. and helping kids. I have kids. a question then. So you said oh, in, gosh, states, in states about, what, 10,000? Currently, yeah. Out of states, what, two, th- two three times yeah. that it's, on average? Yeah. I mean, sometimes half, more than yeah. that. Double. What a good football program does, using your example of Nick Saban, the percentage of out-of-state students versus in-state has skyrocketed since Nick Saban has been there. He has brought a massive influx of money to that university, more so than that $12 million, $11 million Scrooge McDuck type salary he's getting. But is so that, if is you it, take is that, that goes away, back to what, what we say, like demand? So the, the cost of school is higher because there's a higher demand? Oh, yeah. There's I mean, a there's higher a, demand I mean, for Alabama yeah, because there, of There are a saving. lot of students, so for potential students, that see the tide, or even the Auburn on, on, on the television, see the tailgates, ESPN game day, all that stuff, and want to go to a school that has that kind of atmosphere, at least during the fall. So that is a big draw. You talk to people down there from out of state, and they said, you know. I mean, that's I mean, the well, biggest I, draw. I mean, we have the recent analyst. I mean, part of it there, was he grew up at loving Alabama football. That's the reason why, why he went to school there. But it's the quality of education there. I mean, it's part of increasing the tuition cost to, to recruit that best, you know, I'm I, I, taking I, I, football out. I mean, are you trying to recruit the best professors there to provide this higher level of education? I think what Courtney's really trying to say, Sam, is that what if we prioritize education more than we prioritize sports? You know, that that's and that's use it. the revenue that you're getting from sports well, to th- feed back education to drive down overall cost. The, the thing is, the problem is that that this whole scenario is also going on at schools that don't have any sort of athletic program, yeah. and worse so, I think, at a lot of them. Yeah, well, and that doesn't make sense to me because, like, how can it continue? At what because point? Because there's no pushback about like a, on on what they can charge because you can go out and get a loan. Yeah. for whatever amount of money. And, and it has destroyed any sort of supply and demand, I, I, and they have no incentive to not increase and, the price. And this is, this is what the, I don't think it's mentioned terribly often. I believe this, not necessarily any other, and not necessarily anyone else at Oak Worth Capital Bank, but the federal government is, with this, the Biden administration, is trying to address, at least par- partially, a problem that the federal government itself created. When I was, which was some time ago, when I was in college, there was the, the total amount of student debt out, uh, outstanding was $86 billion. $86 billion. Fast forward, which is an expression my children don't understand, fast forward to 2022, and that number is close to $2 trillion, if I'm not mistaken. And not surprisingly, with all that debt that's going out there, literally anyone, as Sam has mentioned, can take out a loan and go to some kind of college. Colleges have had no incentive to keep a lid on prices. I mean, if it's, Absolutely not. Well, and if the and federal so, government's the one holding that debt anyways, and they probably can predict so much of it won't be paid back, that's right. right? That they're going to have to forgive it anyways. So they're probably thinking, hey, if I'm already having to forgive billions of dollars of this trillion dollar debt, might as well get some endorsement and some you know political gain out of it. So I'll just say, oh, no, we're going to give this free debt you know, relief to you. Bingo. Yeah. So, I mean, this isn't new money. Optics. You're welcome, everyone, for explaining that. I'm just going to the conclusion. But, I mean, Bing. the political brownie points from something like this are, I mean, just have to be fantastic. Oh, it's it's at, absolutely fantastic. Especially at a time where, you know, polling um, numbers are just about as down just in dreadful. the dumps as they could possibly be for an administration. And 
coincidentally enough, we're coming up on yeah. November pretty quickly. And the thing is, I mean, forgiving money that you forgiving money that you have lent out to people that might not pay back all of it in any event, as Courtney alluded to, really doesn't cost the federal government all that much money, truthfully. Uh, you and know, you don't think it'll affect the economy? You don't think it it'll keep it should, inflation the high? The thing is, the numbers themselves, as we mentioned, I mean, ten years, $10,000 at 10 years amortized at 5.5% is $108 per month. So that's how much we're really talking about the average student loan borrower. That's how much money they're going to save. It's not $10,000. It's $108 per month. That amount alone. With it, some of that being principal, too. Yes. Like it, yeah, I mean, some of that being principal. With that amount alone, I mean, gee whiz. I mean, is that really going to drive the economy? That, that, I mean, that, is it going to send it into hyperdrive? Now that people have an extra hundred bucks to spend each month, it'll be on basis points, but it's not going to be two, three percentage points, something like that. I, I think the only difference you would, the the bigger would be not the actual extra money in their pockets. It'd be maybe a change in consumer sentiment on that that part of the curve. But even I then, like yeah, even even idea. even then, you're not probably going to see a ton of it. But I think. Any sort of movement in spending would be more from sentiment change than the actual dollars and cents in people's pockets. Maybe going out and spending more than the $100 they're saving anyway. Yeah. So another way to tackle the astronomical increase in the cost of college is to limit people's easy access I say we, to yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the federal government's role in it. I mean, the thing about it is college tuition is really nothing more than good old supply and demand. You increase the supply of cash, you know, available to people. You will you will increase the demand for for college. Now, n- number of colleges aren't going up as rapidly as the number of people applying to college. So we've seen seen things soar. I mean, we've seen prices soar. So yeah, the federal government, with its large S on one point five two trillion dollars worth of money to give out to potential students, has dramatically increased the demand for for uh, for college across the country. And as a result. Yeah, prices have gone up. It's like a massively inelastic good. I yes. mean, it, uh, I mean, completely inelastic. Meaning, because no okay. matter how much they raise their price, people, the demand is not going to change. Okay, and I, with I, any I, sort because of, as, as Courtney said at the beginning, you need to have it, you know, in order to have some sort of career path type job. And the thing is, we've been telling people that, telling people that, telling people that. Meanwhile, I don't think we spent anywhere near enough money on voc tech training because a decent welder, a decent mason, a decent uh, electrician, plumber, what have you, making in the six figures doing sort of craftsman type work. Yeah, it, it, we have never leaned on that. And that's something that I think other countries, developed countries, do a very good job of. Germany is, in particular. Germany, Germany is really the best example of that, where going to a advanced degree type education is very much not the norm. I mean, that is, is more of an exception than the norm, where here that is completely the norm. But do you think part of that also is that we, as a society, kind of glorify our college days? And it's not about the education solely that you're getting. It's about the college experience. Yeah, but so then, why would I want to go? Now, given, I get, but like if we're saying that you can get infinite amount of money to be able to get this college experience. Oh, gosh. When I look back on how it was in college, ugh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm terribly nostalgic about it. Yeah, the good old days weren't all so good. And tomorrow's not as bad as it seems, that type of deal. It's just, gosh, I think, just think how much, what a different person I am than I was in college. Well, you know, I told you before we, we started recording that if I was 18 and wanted to go, you know, say buy a, a laundromat business or a car wash business or something that was make, it would make money immediately mm-hmm. and have a strong chance of paying it back. Good luck getting that loan. No chance. But Good if, luck if, if I said, you know, I'm going to go to this expensive school and take how a, much? How much would you like? Yeah, how much would I like? It doesn't matter what you're going to do with it. Exactly. It doesn't matter if that degree has any chance of making any and sort by, of And by the way, problem. you're only going to pay us back 90 cents on the dollar. What kills me is I have friends. <laughs> I have friends who took out stuff on debt, to your point, and actually got more than what they actually needed and used it to live off of or lived it up because they were like, oh, I got extra money. And you're like, why do you have extra money? And well, the, now they're having to pay all of it back or they got it, you know, waved away based off working at a government hospital or something like that, depending on their trades. But I just think that's really interesting. And one thing that, um, you know, John, you kind of touched on, obviously you're you're living it right now with paying for a child in college. Uh-huh. But I wonder, because for me, we had private loans. I had private loans to go to school and I was helping my parents pay that off well after um, college. 
and my parents kept me as a dependent. And so because of that, I wasn't eligible for federal loans. And so I wonder if this is also going to encourage parents to not potentially claim their children and have their children file their own taxes and obviously show little to no income and be eligible more for government loans. Oh, you're going to see a huge spike in that. And that's probably something that the administration probably didn't think through. Real clearly, you're going to see an enormous number of people because you have to take a look at whatever the uh, tax credits you get for having a kid and all that stuff. There's a number of different things. But there are going to be a lot of people going back to their CPA or to their TurboTax and revisiting their last year's tax returns to see whether or not if it would make sense well, to, to, to do that, particularly if the child only has one more year left in college or something like that. Um, right. So... I, I would say, yeah. I mean, I certainly think that's certainly going to happen. So I don't think this is just going to be the three hundred billion or whatnot that the that the uh, administration says it's going to cost to sort of phantom money. It's just wiping off zeros for all intents and purposes. It's going to be a heck of a lot more, as it is almost always whenever the government does something like this. Yeah, it just seems like it's affecting probably the middle class in a more negative. Um, well, I mean, it's just it's, it's all just it's fueling it's, the fire. Yeah. I mean. It, <laughs> If you, you, bar, you borrowed the money, you said you'd pay it back, and now all of a sudden you don't have to pay back a sum of it. It's just kind of like, I mean, here I am. I mean, if, if, my goodness, I, I, I'm not I'm not living, you know, on a yacht, and uh, I'm, I've, I've picked up all my kids' bills. I mean, they got, how is that, with me as a taxpayer, how is that fair? And yeah. so, you know, people would argue, oh, you have money, you fair, got, got money, you know, <laughs> you've got plenty of money, all that stuff. That's not the issue here. I mean, the issue here is, Ten grand over here for these people. I'm 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 eating the entire bill myself, and then picking up this bill over right. here as a taxpayer. I mean, it's just it's kind of like yeah, I hear the argument with rich country and all, all that stuff. It's just, however, something about that just kind of gets my Irish up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The, the, there's been studies saying the cost is going to be a couple thousand dollars almost per taxpayer to pay for this. Oh. And and. We've spent this and then the Inflation Reduction Act, and we're just bl- blowing money away, throwing it away at problems, and doesn't seem to be fixing them. Whew, a little bit political here today, here on Trading Perspectives, but I'm not sure if we really accomplished anything other than venting our spleen a little bit on exactly yes. exactly what this uh, student uh, loan reduction or forgiveness act is. But, but guys, we always love to hear from you all. So if you have any comments or questions, please, by all means, let us know. You can always drop us a line at tradingperspectives at oakworth.com or you can leave us a review on the podcast outlet of your choice. As always, if you're interested in reading more or hearing more of what we have to say or how we think, please go to oakworth.com and take a look underneath the thought leadership tab for all kinds of exciting information. With that, I'm going to give you guys the last chance to say anything else on this topic here today. That's all I got. That's all Courtney has today, too. (laughs) (laughs) And that's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care.